In this video, we'll talk about the definition of a sequence, what sequences are, and how this is going to help us to do things going forward. So this video introduces the next unit of Calculus 2, which is about sequences and series. The main idea of this topic is to provide some foundation for things we've been doing so far, as well as get to the idea of infinite series. So Taylor's series is kind of the main point that we're heading towards in this chapter. And these have a lot of nice applications that we'll see once we get there, but we need some sort of foundational definitions and knowledge in order to be able to talk about these things appropriately. So the first bit of this foundation is the definition of a sequence. So basically you want to think of a sequence as an ordered list of numbers. And this is defined as a function on a set of increasing integers. So basically the way you want to view this is just as a list. And the idea you want to think about here is, so an gives me the actual sequence, and it's referred to as the terms of the sequence, and n here is the index. It tells you where you are in the sequence. So you could write things like a1 to be the term at index 1 in the sequence. You could write a10 to be the term at index 10 in the sequence. You could write a13 minus a5 to be the difference between the 13th and the 5th term of the sequence. As one other note, they don't have to start at 1, they can start whatever number they want. This is the idea. We'll, we'll see some examples of what sequences might look like. So we can have a sequence like a n is 2 to the minus n for n bigger or equal 0. If we were to start listing that out, we just now write this as a set. And we start counting. So if I plug in 0, what do I get? Well, I get 2 to the minus 0 is 1. If I plug in 1, I get 1 half, then I get 1 fourth, then I get 1 eighth, then I get 1 sixteenth, and so on. And I could then write something like a of 5 is 1 over 32, because that's what 2 to the minus 5 would be 1 over 32. So this is one way of defining sequences generally as an explicit formula, right? I have told you here is what a n is for all n, there it is. There is one other way to talk about sequences. And this is something that you've probably seen before, something like the Fibonacci numbers. Right, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. The idea being to get to the next number, I add the 2 before it. You could write this as a1 is 1, a2 is 1, and a n is a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 for n big or equal 3. So for any n bigger than 3, how do I find a n? Well, I add up the two terms before it. That's what this tells me. This is called a recursively defined sequence, where this appears more of an explicit form. There are ways to go back and forth between these a lot of the time. The Fibonacci numbers have a really interesting explicit form. If you want to look it up, it involves a square root of 5, which is, you know, kind of crazy. And there's one other way that we use sequences to do stuff going forward, and that's things like this. I could let my sequence be n be defined as f of 1 over n minus f of 0 over 1 over n. And this looks a lot like a derivative. And that's the point. These are going to be approximations to a derivative at 0. Not that you need to notice with this example of what it does, but it's an idea that we've thought of this before a little bit. When you think about plugging in smaller and smaller numbers to approximate a derivative, this is what you're doing here. You're doing a sequence and using that to give you an idea of what's going on. So one other really, really important definition from sequence is the idea of convergence. So we say that a sequence a n converges to a limit l and write limit of a n equals l if we get closer and closer to l as n goes to infinity. And the way you actually think about this mathematically is using the formal definition of a limit like we had back in Calc 1. So for any positive epsilon, there is an n so that for all n bigger than that capital N, a m s l is epsilon. The point here is no matter what window I give you, you can always find some point far enough out in the sequence where everything beyond that point is close enough to L. That's the idea of convergence to a limit. We also have the sort of a gated version of this, where if this doesn't happen, we say the sequence a n diverges. And you'll also use here the term diverges to infinity to tell you what's happening to that as well. Now, that definition is great and all, but the way you'll really work with these sorts of limits of these sequences is generally using this theorem. 
And the theorem basically says, if the sequence is defined by a function, and that function has a limit at infinity, then the sequence has the same limit. So if a sequence a n is defined by some function of n, and the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x exists, then limit as n goes to infinity of a n is the same as the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. So if my sequence is defined by a function, and I can look at that function's limit infinity, which is with all of our tricks we had before, things like highest power rule for rational functions, behaviors of exponentials, these all gave us ways to talk about what happens to a function at infinity, but now we can also use those rules to talk about what happens to a sequence at infinity, provided they line up in the same way. So here's one brief example. If I have a n as a sequence 1 plus 1 over n, I want to know the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. Well, based on our last theorem, this should be the same thing as the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. For the function, f of x is 1 plus 1 over x. Well, I know what happens here as x goes to infinity. That 1 over x term goes to 0, and I'm left with 1, which means this limit here must also be 1. Once you start getting more practice with these sequences and how they work, these limits like this will become sort of second nature. And we'll go through more examples in future videos when we talk about how you can play with sequences and how you can manipulate them to get yourself easier ways to find limits of more complicated setups that are beyond just the simple ones like this. But there's the idea of a sequence. The idea of it's a list of numbers, and I want to talk about what happens to that list of numbers as I go further and further out in the sequence. Am I going to something nice? Am I diverging? Am I oscillating? What's happening? That's what limits of sequences start to discuss.